Welcome to the SYNC podcast series, Stories in Health Innovation Through Interprofessional Collaborative Practice. My name is Dr. Tom Ryan. I am the former Executive Vice President and Chief Medical Officer for Mary Washington Healthcare and serve as the SYNC Program Director. As we are aware, modern medicine has been evolving to rely more on interdisciplinary clinical teams and wider systems of care than on decisive individualism from any single professional group. Recognizing this trend and the gap in relevant training, we developed the SYNC program, an innovative statewide partnership. The partnership includes the Medical Society of Virginia, the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association, the Virginia Nurses Foundation, the Virginia Pharmacists Association, and the Virginia Department of Health and Community Health Solutions. This program brings together all members of an interdisciplinary healthcare team. Teams attend six half-day training sessions on topics of leadership, creative problem solving, 21st century healthcare, operationalizing interprofessional collaborative practice, and individual and organizational wellness. They are asked to come to the collaborative with a project idea unique to their organization and put their learning into practice by developing that idea. Project support is provided throughout the program from our knowledgeable staff. To date, 50 teams have participated in SYNC and have tackled a wide variety of topics, ranging from the specific initiatives around chronic disease states, improving emergency room patient flow, to integrating oral health education into our patient offerings. There has been involvement of a great mix of teams from across the Commonwealth of Virginia and across healthcare practice settings with a wide variety of disciplines represented. We will highlight some of the wonderful work that has taken place and lessons learned by interprofessional groups that have gone through the program. Our hope is that in sharing these stories, you will gain ideas, learn from the experience of others, and further foster the spread of healthcare innovation. Now, here's your host for the podcast, Steve Horn of Community Health Solutions. Welcome to the SYNC Podcast. I'm Steve Horan with Community Health Solutions and part of the SYNC support team. Today, we'll be talking with two SYNC graduates from Valley Health. First, we have Larry Ponce, Corporate Director of the Oncology Service Line at Valley Health. Welcome, Larry. Hey, Steve. Good to be with you. Great to have you here. And next, we have Dr. David Switzer, a family medicine physician at Valley Health. Welcome, Dr. Switzer. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for the invitation. Great to have you here. Let's jump right in. Larry, first question is for you. Today, we'll be learning about your SYNC Capstone project in which you convened a whole team of people to improve colorectal cancer screening rates and primary care practices. We're really excited to learn more about this, how you made it happen, especially in the midst of the pandemic. So to kick us off, why did you think it was important to focus your project on colorectal cancer screening and what were you aiming to accomplish? Yeah, so there's a bit of a story behind this. So originally, uh, about six to eight months prior to this, uh, I got a call from uh, Amy Swerczewski. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Amy. Um, forgive me if I didn't. Uh, but um, the uh, 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 VDH was uh, after uh, was in the process of applying for a grant uh, to bring in funds to. Uh, help practices increase uh, colorectal cancer screening rates. And uh, that forced us to take a look inside our own medical group uh, practices. And we found that we had uh, about six practices at that time that were not meeting a, a fundamental threshold of, of screening 60% of, of their uh, patients that were eligible for screening in the practices. So. Um, that's kind of got our attention and, uh, we started an internal conversation. And then when the, the next sync cohort came around, uh, it seemed like a, a good thing to do, to, to go after this topic, to increase colorectal cancer screening rates, uh, uh, in our area, uh, uh particularly with the medical group. Yeah. Great. So we know that this was a team collaboration. 
and we don't have everyone who had a hand in the project with us today. And Dr. Switzer, we especially remember that it was a powerful thing to have you at the table for this. Um, we can really tell when we're in the room, uh, whether it's a physical room or a virtual room and sync. Uh, when the physician leaders are there, it's just a different culture uh, and, and, and things tend to happen uh, more quickly and more creatively. So we know this was a team collaboration and can you give us a sense of the partners that you brought together for this project? Sure, so specifically in the arena of colorectal cancer screening improvement that, that we decided to focus on in our medical group to, to give you an overview, our medical group has primary care providers who uh, order or refer for colorectal cancer screening. And then our medical group also has general surgeons who do colonoscopy to accomplish colorectal cancer screening. So what we were focusing on specifically was the, the process of getting the patient from the primary care side to the general surgery side to, to accomplish the screening via colonoscopy specifically. And um, so we had on the, the clinic side, a registered nurse who was our subject matter expert as far as the initiation of the referral process. She was often involved in getting patients connected with the general surgery service. And then on the general surgery side, we had, of course, the general surgeons themselves, the practice manager for the general surgery practice, specifically the practice in the southern region of our community who helped facilitate and then uh, one key player, uh, very key player, uh, was a nurse navigator that we identified and more or less placed from the oncology arena into the general surgery space to um, assist in um, having, assist the patient in navigating that whole process from beginning to end. Um, also involved was uh, part of the medical executive leadership, our vice president of medical affairs uh, for the Southern region or for two of the Southern region facilities was involved in this as well. So definitely multiple people from multiple areas of the system. And that was so impressive. You know, as I'm listening to you tell that story, what I'm thinking in my mind is the strategic thinking that went into this. One of the things we talk about a lot in sync is this idea of leading from the middle. If you wanna make something happen, sometimes you have to lead up, down and across the organization mm -hmm. and bring together people who maybe don't work together every day. So we really appreciate the, that strategic approach. So now you got a team together and you need to go on a journey. So to give us a sense of that journey, uh, Larry, what were the key action steps for the project and what are some of the results for the, to date? Yeah, so uh, some of the early key action steps was simply to get the team together. And that was, you know, that sounds easy, but uh, with everybody's busy schedules, we just uh, had to uh, look at our, our calendars and just get into some kind of a cadence of meeting so that we could give our, our team a chance at, 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 a, at success uh, in doing this project. And we latched on to a, a, a biweekly cadence. And uh, we were pretty faithful to that, as I recall, uh, Dave. You know, we, um, and, you know, everybody on our team was committed to this. Uh, and we did some things that, that fostered that commitment. You know, we made sure that everybody was involved. Um, and, uh, and we wanted to hear from everybody. And, and, and so, uh, we we engaged everybody on our team uh, every two weeks. Uh, I think one of the key action steps that took us a while was that we started very very broadly, and it was we took a long time to narrow the focus of our group, which uh, was a little bit more difficult, as I recall, than than uh, I initially anticipated, um, and. So once we got a sense of our focus on what we were going to do, then uh, some of the other key action steps included, uh, like, uh, like Dave said, uh, we engaged a nurse navigator 
to uh, help facilitate uh, patients through the system. A couple of other key action steps were that we looked around our system and we, we tried to figure out, well, what is it that we will need in terms of data, in terms of other involvement for people that would support our team, weren't necessarily a part of our team uh, in, in the sense of our sync team, but, but we would have to pull in uh, additional resources to help us with this project. And the medical group has uh, some statisticians and some other managers and leaders that, that were key to helping us uh, with our project. Um, some of the results to date were, were interesting. Um, so, but let me go back a little bit and say that one of the, 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 the starting points that we had was, and, and Dave, feel free to, to chime in on this, but I think your practice, you did kind of this, um, uh, this study that you looked at 100 patients, as I recall, maybe it was 50, uh, but I recall that, that about, you, you, you wanted to track these patients that were given an order for a colonoscopy, a screening colonoscopy, and you track these patients and you found that something like um, 75% of the patients actually did not follow through with, with, the, with the screening colonoscopy. You know, this was a physician ordered test. And so we took that information and we asked ourselves, why? Why is that happening? And we, we really sort of began to pick apart the process that patients go through. And that's where we landed on this idea of we needed to attach a nurse navigator to each patient to help guide them through the process. And uh, that yielded some uh, the, the best results, as I recall. Um, is that right, Dave? Yeah, no, I, I agree with everything Larry just said. Um, I would probably just throw in a couple of other comments. One um, that he definitely touched on, the, as far as the question of what were the keys for bringing people together, I think one of the things that we learned, it, it, I, I agree with Larry, it took, it took me a little while to figure this out um, at least, but uh, you needed to figure out that you could only bring so many people together, uh, at least in the time frame and the cadence we were talking about. So as, as, we, as we realized that, that's, that's how I recall we began narrowing our focus as far as what could we accomplish um, with, with a manageable group of people from a, as a manageable representation of these entities. And then Larry's comments about the data, he's absolutely correct. So, so just prior to the SYNC project, just by coincidence, the RN that I had mentioned had been looking at our referrals from our practice and it was around hundred people, a little more actually. And what we were finding was that about 75% of those patients who were referred for screening colonoscopy somehow, some way didn't, didn't make it all the way to the end. And I think one of the other key things to Larry's point about the data and specifically that data, one of the key things about bringing people together, uh, it was pretty compelling to the general surgery group when we brought that data to them. That, that engaged them in this conversation because they could see for themselves that we had a, a huge opportunity to improve. Yeah, it, I guess uh, it was a part of the process was just recognizing the pebbles in our shoes, you know, that in, in, the, in the process. Uh, and um, what's, what's the, the concept of, um, you know, where you just, you know that something's not working right, but everybody just seems to accept it. Yeah. And it seems to be business as usual. And, you know, part of going through this, this sync uh, program is to, it, it kind of, at least for me, you know, kind of allows us to step back and examine the pebbles in our shoes and, and to, to begin to ask questions about uh, how we could, how we could, uh, you know, take another uh, approach at that. And, and, you know, Steve, I'm reminded of Dr. Tom Ryan um, a couple of years ago when we met uh, in the opening uh, for another cohort at uh, Maggiano's. 
uh, at that dinner meeting, he, he said, you know, the quality of the solution or the quality of the answer depends on the quality of the questions that you ask. And that really stuck with me. And, and so um, I, think, I think just recognizing that, you know, we don't have to accept business as usual. Let's, let's take a look at those things and try to improve them. So well said. I've got a page full of notes here of nuggets just from listening to this part of the story. And uh, there's some commonalities with others we've interviewed in the Sync podcast series as well. But you're the first couple of folks to use the word cadence. I really like that idea of cadence. You have to have a cadence for a team. And it's not an easy thing to accomplish in a big, diverse organization uh, where people have a lot of competing responsibilities. So we really appreciate that. This idea of who and how many can really be practically contribute practical contributors on a team. I, I think that's a really key strategic question. This idea of funneling, of getting together and working together to focus the project on something that's really meaningful and valuable, but also doable. That's really key. Uh, love how you use data and you learned from tracking. I guess in, in one sense, it's kind of a classic QI. But I think what makes these Valley Health teams a little bit different is you're, you're so proactive about asking why. And if you remember in sync, we actually talked about the five whys, right? Yeah. You all are great at asking why. And that, that just leads you to positive places. And um, yeah, and, and also just the willingness to acknowledge the pebbles in our shoes. It is such a big and complex uh, healthcare system out there. How, how can we not have pebbles in our shoes, right? So let's, let's acknowledge them. And let's start asking those why questions. So, gosh, you really appreciate that as a team strategy. And what I'd like to do now with your help, Dr. Switzer, I, I think especially as a physician leader, one of our key themes in the SYNC program is teamwork, but especially in the context of interprofessional collaborative practice. So in your project, the team came together across organizational units as well as professional disciplines. So when you think about team culture and that cross-disciplinary um, culture, what were the keys for bringing people together? And can you share maybe a couple of breakthroughs or success stories that illustrate how the team developed? So I, I think one of the keys to me, one of the takeaways for me was the conversations were bet between, between the representatives of those entities I described were always successful when the focus was the patient. When, when, when the conversation was all about how do we improve this for the patient? How do we take better care of our patient? How, how is the health of our community improved by making changes to the way we do things? Um, I know that this almost sounds cliche, but it really is kind of easy and to, to, to sort of find yourself insidiously falling into the we, they, us, them, uh, your process, as opposed to our process, keeping it focused on the patient was one of the key takeaways uh, in my learning experience from this. And kind of along those lines, and, and Larry alluded to this earlier, one, one of our, our countermeasures, so to speak, uh, as far as mitigating the, the barriers to the patient for completion of this process was having the navigator in place and what that really gave us was an opportunity through, through her eyes, through, through her experience, to understand as a, whole, as a whole group what the patient experience was like walking through this. And that was critically important because we can make all kinds of assumptions about what the patient knows or doesn't know, what resources they have, um, and we can be entirely incorrect. And having that person that was at at the patient's elbow, at least via telephone a lot of the time, we found out some pretty interesting things. And one of the things that, that, that I'll share that is very concrete, but I think is, is also very illustrative of, of the big picture. There was a patient uh, who had been referred, uh, who, had, who had been successfully connected with the general surgery team. They had their date and time for their colonoscopy. It was the, uh, I think two days before their colonoscopy. 
they were given instructions to go to the drugstore to get the the preparation for for the uh, for the for the cleansing that we all are uh, are familiar with with colonoscopy, and the patient got to that point at the drugstore and had no idea uh, based on the instructions they were given what the preparation was that they were supposed to buy. There were too many choices, and some of them were quite expensive. And I don't know this with 100% certainty, but I am pretty confident that had the navigator not been available to the patient, the patient probably would have said, well, forget it, this is too complicated, this is too expensive. And that would have been another story uh, in the collective narrative of how the patient doesn't get to the end of the process. Because the navigator was there, one, uh, she was able to talk with the patient about both the preparation choices and the cost and the, un the, the unintended uh, pearl, the unintended lesson that came out of that was when she went back to the general surgeon, uh, as I recall, the general surgeon said, well, let me just send it in as a prescription. That way we know the patient is getting uh, exactly what we need them to get. And even if the pharmacist directs them to the over-the-counter products, they'll get directed to the right ones. Well, as it turned out, we found out at least with this patient's insurance, if it was sent in as a prescription, it was free. So the cost wasn't a barrier. So this patient successfully completed their colonoscopy uh, and we learned a whole lot just from that one person. Wow, what an illustrative story. You know, this idea of keeping the patient in the center of the room uh, is so powerful. And I, I, I actually remember Valley Health folks sitting around, you know, um, our, our virtual table and talking about that. And, and that, that is a powerful principle right there. Another thing you did is you thought about the patient beyond the clinical walls. When they're going out into the community, to the pharmacy, and, and, and it carries outside those clinical walls and that patient experience uh, is therefore broadened in your eyes. And that navigator was able to tell that story. And that pins us back to design thinking. If you remember, we talked about design thinking in sync and design thinking begins with empathy, empathizing with that patient as experiencing the system. So those, those strategies that you use there to bring that team together and tell that compelling story those strategies have legs. They really do work. And I can think through a lot of our most successful sync teams, they're really good at putting the patient in the middle, following the patient beyond the clinical walls, and really trying to empathize with that experience. So thank you for sharing that. Can, can I just add something? Because, you know, one of the things that was interesting to me in this process, uh, uh, like, uh, like Dave was talking about, is that for me, it kind of opened my eyes. Uh, to see this through the eyes of the patient, because, you know, we've got the process and, and uh, you know, uh, clinicians often view this in a certain way, right? But a part of our process was that patients were asked to complete a packet of information and uh, in order to get an appointment. Uh, so from the patient's perspective, you have to fill out this application form to get a colonoscopy. Hello? <laughs> How often is that going to work? <laughs> you know, so so it, it, it's it's interesting to get a different perspective on this uh, by uh, seeing it through the eyes of the patient. Yeah, and another great illustration, and I pin that Larry back to one of, one of our positive leadership principles that we talk about in Sync, and that is challenging the process. And, and what you did is you challenged the process on behalf of the patient uh, to try and remove those obstacles which is uh, an excellent strategy and, and commendable. So Larry, let's keep talking about this, this idea of patient value and also organizational value. You know, one of our key themes in SYNC is to make sure that we have capstone projects that deliver real value. And so talk a little bit more about how you would describe the value of the project for your patients and for the organization as a whole. Yeah, so uh, from our patient's perspective, you know, we paired up a, a nurse uh, with each patient and uh, for the study period, which basically was that ran from February to August of 2021, 
uh, we had a nurse navigator talk to 467 patients and guide them through the process. Uh, there were, there were uh, scripted and planned moments where that nurse uh, talked with the patient early on in the process and then followed up uh, uh, regularly with the patient to make sure that the patient was guided through uh, answering the patient's questions and then following up after the patient had the exam. Um, that yielded uh, very positive results. Uh, but we also learned some things through that process and we learned a lot about our own process. And uh, from the point in time of the, the, of the order for the colonoscopy through completion of it, uh, our process was averaging four months, which is quite long. Uh, and uh, so we then went back and, and were asking, well, how can we speed this process up and what else can we do uh, to do that? So organizationally, that, that helped to open our eyes uh, with this. We also uh, uh, discovered that part of the issue is perhaps resources. Maybe we need additional resources in order to perform those colonoscopies uh, in, our, uh, in our different hospitals. You know, so, uh, and there's ongoing value uh, that this uh, experience has produced. Uh, uh, Dr. Dave and I are, are in an ongoing conversation about how to uh, bring uh, OC fit or is it fecal immuno uh, histochemical testing? Uh, yeah, uh, to our organization in a planned, comprehensive way in a program where, where uh, our laboratory is in the process of acquiring a piece of capital equipment to run those exams. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, part of, 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 the, of the beauty of having uh, Dr. Switzer involved with this is that he's a key leader in primary care in our medical group and who could, you know, um, once we get this OC fit test in, uh, and, and for the audience to understand this, you know, there's uh, screening colonoscopy is like the gold standard. And then the next thing you can do, as I understand it, is, is a fit test um, on an annual basis. Uh, and so we're bringing that into the Valley Health uh, uh, organization. Uh, as an option. Excellent. Dr. Switzer, uh, can't let this question go by without asking you for your point of view, through the eyes of your patients, you know, uh, what really strikes you about the power of this project and what you're able to accomplish? Yeah, that's, it, this is a great question. So I think on the individual patient level, the way I look at it, and once again, Larry touched on this, uh, and actually you're, you made the comment, Steve, thinking about the patient beyond the, the walls of the clinic and always keeping in mind, trying to put yourself in, in the patient's shoes, I think one thing we were able to offer them is, is, is comfort and guidance uh, during a process that seems very routine to us, but is very daunting to, to a lot of people. And so I think at the individual patient level, that was an accomplishment. I think at the community level, the population health level, so to speak, at least in the, in the region where this project was centered, I think sometimes, and, and I'm guilty of this too, I think sometimes we, we lose track of the fact that when we're talking about something like cancer screening, it's very much a marathon and the successes don't declare themselves, right? The, you know, the people who don't get cancer don't call you up and say, hey, I didn't get cancer. Thanks for doing that screening test. But we know statistically, the better we do this, the more lives we save. And that life is not just a statistic. That's someone's mother or grandmother uh, or spouse. And so um, I think that that is the community health slash population health value uh, that this, this project brought. That's a profound impact on your community. Um, it, it truly is. I'm going to move to our last question now. We've been talking about team development and team learning. 
But Sync is also focused on personal learning as well. Uh, so this is a question for each. We'll start with Larry. Larry, could you sh uh, share a couple of personal insights or ideas that you've gained and carried forward from your Sync experience? Well, I, I think that uh, th there are many, and uh, but I think just developing relationships with people that Sync brought us together. Um, but, you know, I, for example, I value my relationship with, with Dr. Switzer. Uh, I think the Sync project brought us together, but uh, Dave and I are co-leading, uh, we're, we're trying to lift up another team, if you will. You know, if, if, we can all, if, we, if we can think about this as, you know, we're trying to develop our own version of a sync team internal to the Valley Health system. And uh, one of the, one of the uh, uh, discoveries is that going through our project in colorectal cancer screening and a prior project in trying to, uh, to uh, look at uh, lung cancer screening and other other kinds of screenings for cancer, we have a lot of one-off kind of of activities, you know. But but from a from a Valley Health System perspective, we don't have a comprehensive system approach to keeping the people that live in our communities safe from cancer uh, by promoting early identification and cancer prevention. And so it was through this, the relationship that I, you know, have with Dr. Switzer and other people through the SYNC process that, and the, and the learnings that I've had uh, in going through a couple of SYNC teams now that's offered me, uh, you know, a lot of excitement in pulling another team together at a corporate level to, to look at comprehensive cancer screening uh, in our community. Well, that's music to the ears of the Sync partners, because one of the things we, we've always hoped is that, you know, Sync learning will stick and spread uh, within, within the sponsoring organizations. And it, it sounds like that is happening. Dr. Switzer, your turn. Could you share a couple of personal insights or ideas that you've carried forward from your Sync experience? Yeah, sure. So, so one of them I touched on earlier, which is as patient-centered as possible, uh, stay as patient-centered as possible, uh, and, and you will be more likely to succeed or make an impact. But touching on what, what Larry said earlier, uh, and, and believe me, the, uh, the, the appreciation uh, that I have uh, for, for Larry uh, and uh, the work that we've been doing together over the last year or two is, is immense. And tying into that, one of the things that I, I learned from SYNC sort of indirectly, so let, Larry's, Larry's enthusiasm around this fueled my enthusiasm, and, and I hope that that was somewhat reciprocal, uh, but I have been in positions uh, and I'm currently in some, some positions where I'm, I'm, I'm leading a team or trying to lead a project, and when you have a partner with that enthusiasm, it is, it is so much easier to persevere in, uh, based on my sync experience. Um, you can do it alone, but it sure, but it sure is nice to have someone uh, partnered with you. Uh, and so for me, that was a that that was a big takeaway from Sync. Really appreciate that. You know that that kind of connection again is a common theme in our most successful Sync projects. You know, and uh, if you think back, another one of our positive leadership strategies was inspiring a shared vision. And sometimes you're just doing that for each other every day on the team, you know, and it sounds like that's happening and, it, and it's a very, very powerful leadership quality. So we appreciate that. And gosh, we could go deep on this. We could probably talk for hours, but our time is up. So I want to say thank you, Larry Ponce and Dr. David Switzer for sharing your insight and experience with us today. We also know you're representing a whole team of committed professionals as well. And so we thank everybody at Valley Health for supporting this vital work. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Dr. Switzer. Thanks, Steve. We hope you have gained some new insights and ideas from the story shared. To learn more about the next SYNC offering, please visit syncvirginia.org. That's 
S-Y-N-C-V-A.org. There you will find more information, can view past projects, and contact us with any questions. Through the generous support of funding from the Virginia Department of Health's CDC Living Well and Innovate grants, there are opportunities for teams to attend tuition-free. See the site for details or contact us directly. Until the next time, this is Dr. Tom Ryan signing off. Thank you for listening.